went to the gym the other day and it was rather empty now don't get me wrong i went at half six in the morning usually people don't go to the gym that early but still it was surprisingly empty now i'm not too sure if this is a reflection on what i've been seeing outside because i've read some reports of people that went to new year's eve and new year's days parties and people are basically saying there was hardly anybody out and um, everyone kind of did their own thing um, kind of did similar thing to what i did and just chilled at home and had these other plans to go dinner and stuff but the rave scene wasn't you know popping as much as it probably should have been now there are varying reasons to it you know maybe the cost of living maybe just too many parties everyone spread around the place but i wonder if the nightclubs the lack of people in the gym, sorry, is reflected to the nightclubs. Maybe people are just off resolutions. Maybe people are off big fancy celebrations. Maybe that's not a thing anymore. Maybe that isn't a thing. Maybe. Who bloody knows? Who bloody knows? Anyway, uh, I couldn't really do much for my New Year's. As I mentioned previously in another episode of The Random Show, if you haven't checked that out, please check out my main channel, Random Show. But I was ill. I was really violently ill. It, at the worst timing ever, right? The worst timing, I was ill. The one time I was actually going to go to a New Year's Day party because I don't usually party on New Year's Day. New Year's Eve is usually my time to like reflect, welcome in the new year, um, you know, have a little drink, maybe go get some dinner, you know, that sort of vibe. I don't really like doing a whole party party thing because unfortunately I did try that beforehand. Um, me and my friend Bobby, we tried that many, many years before. We always went to like New Year's Eve parties and they never really were great. The only New Year's Eve parties I can remember being great were the ones we went to people's houses. But usually, who wants to do, you know, it's like doing a fucking Halloween party. Who wants to do a Halloween house party? Who really wants to host one? You know what I mean? You don't want to do the clean up. You don't want to have people in your house touching your shit, stealing your stuff. You know what I mean? It's just annoying. So, unfortunately, the older you get, the less people also want to invite strangers to their home. So, the best New Year's Eve parties I ever had were, were people's houses, but people don't do that anymore. So, nowadays, my New Year's Eves usually consist of me going to dinner, having a drink, um, you know, seeing, watching the fireworks, all that good stuff. And this year was going to be one of the better ones because this year was the return of the big fireworks that they have on the fucking um near the river thames in london l l the, you know the london iron shit they have this big fucking firework thing you can watch it live on tv for free if you want or you can pay i think 15 pounds to go and see it yourself in person which is a bit dumb because fireworks go up in the sky you don't really need to be right there in the middle to go and see it right in the front but some people go it's a big event so this year was going to be actually a good one i was gonna i was gonna, gonna go see the fireworks I was going to get some dinner, go to a fucking fancy Italian restaurant, go to a good little cocktail bar to have some drinks and then kind of welcome in the new year that way, right? And then on the next day, I was meant to go to fucking Hotbox on New Year's Day. I meant to go get, put my fucking disco suit on and head over to Hotbox and have an absolute blast. And I was looking forward to it so much. I planned the whole year, you know, looking forward to this one big time in the year, one big event. And guess what happened? Yes, you guessed it. I got sick. And out of the blue, out of the blue, I got ill. I got this crazy sinus infection that legitimately gave me vertigo. A sinus infection so bad, I couldn't stand up and walk. I was like in an eternal K-hole. But like the worst type of K-hole, the K-hole that made you like sick to your stomach. Because sometimes you're in a K-hole and you have this kind of, you know, disassociative feeling where you feel like you're sinking and shit. But I had vertigo and dizziness where the whole room was spinning on like an XY axis and shit. But, and also my stomach was bubbling. Like I wanted to vomit, but I couldn't. Because I don't know why there's something about me. Maybe I'm just too manly. Maybe I'm just too much of a man. Maybe I'm just too strong. But I don't vomit. I don't know what it is about me. I don't actually like projectile vomit. And I think I do need to. I think I need I might need to go in a little bit of a of a bulim of a bulimic era and just start putting my fingers down my mouth and stuff. Like do my organic ozempic. That'll be my version of ozempic. Forget the little jab in the stomach. My Ozempic are these two fingers, right? <laughs> they kind of look like the Ozempic pen as well, don't they, right? So that's what I would need to do. But I couldn't vomit. So I had this crazy vertigo. It was flipping, killing me. And like a real man, like a real full-blooded, heterosexual, masculine man, guess what I did? 
Yes, you guessed it. I just laid in bed and hoped it got better by itself, right? I didn't go to the GP. I didn't call the doctors. I did nothing. I just tried to like firm it. I tried to like sweat it out under my fucking duvet while I was going dizzy. My front of my head, honestly. Sinus infections are so awful. I, I, I think I'm starting to get them quite often these days because in a few years ago, I had really crazy polyps in my nostrils where I had to get surgery for. So they went in there with a laser and they lasered off these polyps and there were these massive little balls, these glands that were inflamed in my nostrils around in my side somewhere. It's, a, it's a, I don't know if it's a typical thing, but I think if you have allergies, you get them a lot. So that's why sometimes when I'm on my streams or my recording and stuff, you see me, you hear me fucking, you know, sniffing a lot all the time. It's not because I've been doing gear all night. Most of the time it's because of my flopping sinuses, you know, have been agitated or allergies, wherever it may be. But they're quite sensitive up there. So maybe that's the reason why. But I think ever since I got that surgery, the surgery did well because now I don't sound as nasally. Because in the past, if you would have heard a podcast, you'd have heard me sounding very, very nasally because my nose is always stuffed. Now it's not so stuffed, but now I also get sinus infections, you know, and I get allergies a lot and shit. So the the sinus infection, honestly, I swear in my life, it made the front of my forehead feel as if like there was a ball in there, like it was an extra weight, I could feel it on my forehead, and I couldn't shake it, and for once, usually when I get like a sinus infection, I usually get, have a lot of like, you know, have a runny nose, but this time there was nothing, but I could smell it, I could smell this, you know, the sinusy smell, the disgusting taste the back of my mouth, but I had no runny nose, so it's such a weird one, so, but every time I try to stand up, I would, I would be dizzy, I'd want to fall over and shit, it was awful, so I finally got myself fixed up, went to the flipping GP, got myself some antibiotics. And for once, even though I had big plans for New Year's Day and New Year's Eve, I've done it plenty of times in the past. I'm sure some of you have done it before where you've gotten ill and you've had some antibiotics and they tell you, you can't drink, you can't do anything else. And then I just done it straight away the second day. But for once, I actually listened and actually abided by the instructions because I hate the feeling of being sick. I'm not sure about you guys, but I hate feeling, you know, incapacitated. I feel, hate feeling like I can't do anything. I can't move. I hate feeling like somewhat useless. So I actually listened. I listened. I got the medicine. I've used it all the way to the end now. I've only got two pills left that I'm going to be taking later on. So I'm actually proud of myself for doing it because in, in days gone by, I would have still gone to the party. I would have still just drunk on antibiotic, which is fucking crazy. I've done it before in the past. I'm not afraid to admit it. I've done plenty of word, worse things, trust me. But what a bad way to start the new year. You know, with that, well, I was kind of happy. It was a good, it was a good, bad way to end it. And, uh, good way to start the year because i did kind of you know got recovered but i'm so pissed i miss hotbox i'm so pissed so pissed because the videos and pictures i saw on their fucking instagram it looked fucking amazing it sounded really good obviously you can't take pictures inside but damn it damn it damn it but anyway apart from that i'm feeling good i'm ready to go i'm ready and i'm ready to flip in pod yeah big up i am sin sign has to put me down before too yeah honestly man i swear on my life i don't wish that on anybody and like I said, like, I think I'm very, um, I don't know what the term is, but I have this thing where I can do, I'm, I'm okay with like external pain, but when it's like internal and I can't see it, it drives me even more crazy. Like, cause usually I think I get some, sometimes I get sense of relief when I blow my nose. It almost feels like you're like flushing yourself out, but literally I had no runny nose, nothing but I felt my sinuses, this front of my head, that little circle here, like that, from like underneath my nose, to over above my eyebrows, I just felt like it was heavy, but I couldn't flush it out anyway, it was so awful, damn it man, but I'm happy, the antibiotics work, um, these things are pretty incredible, isn't it, right, if you've got a fucking STD, they work, if you've got a sinus infection, they work, antibiotics are a flipping godsend, so big up whoever fucking invented them, hopefully it was a black person, Hopefully it was a black person. We were kings, right? We invented antibiotics, but yeah. Maybe someone in South Africa invented it. Oops. Whoop. Anyway, um, moving on. So um happy new year to everybody. Um, that's my fucking brand for the new year. I've also got New Year's resolutions. New Year's resolutions this year have been interesting because people are now doing now instead of doing new year's resolutions, people are doing like in and out list, which is odd. I feel like an in and out list is like a cop out way of doing because the resolution is pretty matter of fact. It's pretty like I want to do this, this, this and this. But an in and out list can be a little bit vague. It can be a little bit like um, out war, you know, in peace. 
It can be a bit wafty and a bit, you know, woo woo wow wow, but it doesn't really say anything. It doesn't really push or challenge you. And I feel like resolutions for as naffy and as wanky and as hustle culture, rah rah as they are, they're quite necessary, especially in, in my line of work where everything can be a little bit dreamy it's nice to have some actual solid things that you have to act as weird little guardrails so that you can kind of keep yourself in some level of you know correctness along the path so if you can get a bit crazy but you know you've got these guardrails you can't need to abide by so for this year I did. A, I just built off the last year's resolution, but I just tweaked and increased it a little bit to give myself a bit of a challenge because this is going to be really difficult to do, but I'm aiming to do it. And these are all things I aim to do throughout the year and just keep it cracking. So let's get it going. So my new resolution for the year, as I posted on my Twitter, you can follow me on Twitter. You know what the flicking at is, Agassino Zinger, all one word. But my resolution for 2024 is as follows. Read 150 books. 100,000 subs on YouTube, run a minimum of 30 miles per week, maintain a weight of 190 pounds all year, one hour of Spanish and Portuguese language learning per day, and write and publish one blog post per day. Those are my goals that I'm aiming to keep for 2024 as guardrails. Now, will I achieve those things every single day? Probably not. But they are guardrails. They are meant to be a, a kind of, you know, the, the kind of safety net that I have around me so that I can't get too crazy and I can't get too complacent. That's the main aim that I'm going with with this. But, but I have realized in the last few years that a lot of people don't really like resolutions. They don't really like how they sound. They don't really like what they do. They don't really like how the vibe that they give off, right? And it's unfortunate, really. Like I said, it's unfortunate because I feel like nowadays, more so than ever, I feel like we all need a little bit of direction, a little bit of um, a little bit of order, a little bit of a uh, you know, a, a bit of a purpose. And I feel like sometimes resolutions can do that for you, just to kind of give you an indication of what you want to get out of the year because sometimes at the end of the year it can be a little bit of a bittersweet moment it's sort of like coming back you know from work coming back to work from your first day of fucking vacation it can feel a little bit like man i wish i was still on holiday and the end of the year could be a little bit like that like man i wish i would have did this this and that so sometimes resolutions are a good way for you to kind of make sure that you correct those things because what you realize usually is that sometimes in a year instead of doing all those you know, what have I got there? Six things. Maybe even just doing two of those things is going to bring me so much more satisfaction if, if I don't do any. But sometimes you to give yourself a list of six, then you end up doing two, and then you look back at the end of the year, you're like, rah, I did a lot. But if you didn't start with the list of six, you wouldn't have never got to the two. So I feel like as, you know, as sometimes anxiety ridden as it can be to give yourself these sort of list and to give yourself actually a depression when you've already got loads of things to worry about you've got bills to pay you've got kids to look after family to feed all this stuff i know i get it but for me i've gotten a lot of value from it just because again maybe it's because of my brain and because i'm a bit crazy and i do loads of wild shit it's nice to have these things just so i know okay, Ag, don't go too crazy, don't get too fucked up, don't lose focus, this is what you need, because I know if I, if I do these things on this list on a weekly basis, this brings me the most, most amount of, of, of like, you know, this brings me a lot more value and love in life, right, if I'm reading books, I'm learning new things, those new things I'm learning, I'm talking to you guys about them, so even though I read the books, you get to kind of share and learn about the things that I read, and maybe that can help you in the things that you do, hundreds, hundreds, um, to thousands subs on YouTube is a little bit of a, you know, it's a little bit of a, it's a little bit of a, you know, I'm wanking myself up type of thing, but in trying to get to 100,000 subs, most likely that means I'm going to be making more content, if I'm making more content, that means I'm putting more videos out there, more videos out there, more people will see them, more people will see them, more people might like them, blah, 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 blah. Do you know what I mean? So it's kind of self-serving, but it also self serves others in a weird way. Um, running 30 miles per week, like I love to run and usually I noticed before in the past when I was running a lot, guess what I was also doing? Listening to a lot of music. 
But now that I don't run as much, I'm not listening to a lot more music. So I'm not getting through the lot more albums than I was before. And then listen to the albums, informs my DJ, inform my DJ, means I'm going to be playing better, playing better, get better gigs, blah, blah, blah. So it all kind of, you know, helps overall. And of course, the maintaining of the weight thing is obviously an a, 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 a easy thing to kind of realize because, you know, I'm, I'm into clothes and shit. I like to look good in the clothes that I wear. And I'm also not the kind of guy that likes to, you know, force the fucking fashion thing if the if the fucking body isn't right so the body's right i feel good in the clothes i have i'm being more adventurous to the fits i'm putting out there i'm stamp i'm making my mark down because i think this year also i'm going to be going crazy with the fit pics so if you see me on the ig doing weird fucking poses and acting like a little kawaii cute little fucking you know ego and stuff don't say nothing just don't laugh just double tap and keep it moving all right because i'm gonna be posting loads of little cute like haha pictures in my you know blowing a kiss face and poking out my tongue and shit so just don't watch that okay keep it shh. but yeah resolutions for me loving it that's what i'm doing um if you have any resolutions that you're also thinking of doing let me know let me know okay okay but like i said when i went to the gym the other day it was fucking empty so i have a feeling most people don't fuck with new Year's resolutions most people are over it you know what i think happened i think covid broke new Year's resolutions i think covid i think there was a period i think it might have been like 2020 i feel like 2019 going to 2020 where everyone was like fuck a fuck a fucking resolutions i'm depressed i hate the world why are we locked down nothing's open i've lost my job i can't go on holiday all these things that like people were just annoyed so i think covid is what broke new Year's resolutions i think ever since then resolutions have never been the same that's my gut feeling because i was so surprised the other day i was i went to the gym honestly i went to the gym on the 2nd of january because i was still recovering on the first the second january was my first like day where i was like okay i can, I can leave my house now I went to the gym on the 2nd of January and I swear to God, there was hardly anybody there. There was like six of us in there. I was like, wow. I was generally surprised. And again, it wasn't like, again, it, you know, it's not 9 a.m. It was 6.30, but 6.30 is still quite an early, uh, it's still quite a time where people are going to go, you know, and get their workout in, come back home and, you know, and change and go to work and shit. So it's still a prime time. And I was generally shocked that it was that empty. I was like, okay, most people don't give a fuck anymore which is quite good. I don't mind that. I don't mind that. I don't mind that. Because I think there was a period in time where it was almost like people kind of looked down on you if you didn't have goals, if you didn't have like big ambitions, if you didn't have resolutions and fucking things you wanted to do. It's like, I don't know, just being a decent human and looking after your family and, you know, doing good by others and stuff is somewhat commendable also. You don't have to be an entrepreneur and want to hustle and grind for you to be of value. But I feel like there was a time, maybe that was why COVID came around. Maybe COVID was a weird rapture in a way, right? A, a weird kind of like lifestyle rapture because everyone was wrapped up in their work, you know, wrapped up in their fucking whatever, their careers. Maybe COVID was a way to kind of like, hey, let's relax a little bit you're not fucking jeff bezos let's just chill out <laughs> you know what i mean let's get back to the basics look after your fucking family say hello to your kids a little bit play with your fucking kids they fucking miss you and then we can go from there you know what i mean maybe maybe okay but what do i know what do i know